Hey, this is Gary with Rough Road RV Life. We like looking at Freedom, and right now Freedom is at our home base. But while we're here, uh, the last trip we had out, we um, kind of had a tire thing going on. We weren't sure. Now what we use is the TST system. And if you look at the screen, it's going to cycle around. See, it says it's a low flat, a low tire warning there. So let's uh, let's watch this. Okay, so I got 88 in that tire, 88 over there, 97 on the outside passenger, and there's my problem right there. It says zero on the inside passenger, 96 on the inside driver and 98 now these this is actually not a trailer but this is my tow vehicle and i and i don't have my monitors on so it won't record so i've got to find out why that one is zero this is what you'll hear if you have a low pressure tire which that's alerting us of our problem tire there on the ground is my tire pressure gauge and this is a uh, a Jayco Digital 200 pounds. We'll put a link in the description. Okay? So, this is the one that's giving me a problem. So I want to take a pressure of it. Make sure this is on first. It's on. And it's showing zero. zero. And this is the tire pressure monitor right here. So I, well do I have a problem with the monitor? So let's just check it straight to the valve stem. Make sure it's on. Go right to the valve stem. Still says zero. Still reading zero. But if I crawl underneath here and look at this tire, it is hard as a rock. It is not, it's not wobbly. It's very hard to get under there because our jacks are lowered, our airbags are lowered. So, but it is very hard. It, it doesn't wobble or nothing. So what we're thinking is maybe this is a bad valve core inside the valve stem which lets the air go in and out. Because if I were to hook my air compressor to it, it wouldn't even let me put air in it. So, what I was gonna do is remove this valve core, and technically, a lot of air should come rushing out. Unless the tire is genuinely empty, but then, I should be able to put air into it, but it won't let me. Or there could be an obstruction on the other side of the valve core blocking it. And if that's the case, I'm going to push a little wire through there and see if I can dislodge it. This is what a valve core looks like. It's inside the valve stem. This is a pack of them. Dollar twenty-nine at the auto parts store. For four valves, valve cores. I got these at the uh, K and K Truck Supply. They, they charge eighty-six cents for four of them. You will need a removal tool. What this does, this little slot hooks right into that little slot like that, and then you just unscrew the valve core like that. Okay, just to show, Ninety-eight. It's exactly what the tire pressure monitor system says. So, this is working. That's working. That says there's no air. So, let us proceed with this adventure. So, I'm going to get my tire removal tool and my valve core, and I'm going to attempt to extract it. Let the extraction process begin. Push it in there. Just gonna 
I squirted some WD-40 in there. Well, it's out. And there's no air rushing out of it. Okay, so at this point, when I extracted the valve core, it is on an extension. Part of a valve core extension that connects to the valve stem on the inner tire and comes through to the outside where you can actually access it. That's why it has that stem on the valve core because it goes in, that rod goes in and touches the inner valve stem on the inner tire. So that when you push this in, the stem pushes in and opens the valve stem core on the inner valve stem on the tire. And the ones that I purchased were strictly just for a valve stem. Like that valve stem would go right into the tire here we go right into the tire and not through an extension first. In hindsight, should have realized when I pulled that out with that rod connected to it that I was actually dealing with an extension and not just a valve stem. Had I been thought that through further, I would have, should have known that by screwing in just a standard valve extension into that valve core into that extension it would not work because it's not going into the tire it's just going into the extension so without the rod it would not work but I guess at the moment of frustration I wasn't thinking right about that you were hoping anything would work yes. right? <laughs> but it didn't but it didn't work and it shouldn't have worked and it didn't work so this is why this project went into another yes. day. Now that valve core I bought would have worked on my outer front tires or my outer rear tires, but the inside tires on the on on the duals on the inside have extensions that go around and out so that you can access them to put air in. Okay, so this is a continuation of yesterday where we started this tire thing there will be no pictures of my wife today because she's still in her pajamas but anyway Stop it. <laughs> this was what I was looking for and after much searching yesterday afternoon I found finally found it right up the street here at Parker Tire and this is what I had to buy it's $15 bought this to take this out of that this was inside here and this is what I'm hoping is all I have to do to make this work if not I can put this back in here and unscrew that extension and try to get back behind between those two tires and put this on which I don't want to do because I am not built for that <laughs> now if you can see this very closely I don't know if you see the very tip top of this see there there's no little valve coming out of the top of that it's actually stuck in there, in that little hole there. This is what it should be, this right here. So there's the difference between the bad valve and the good valve is this thing here, which actually depresses and lets the air in. So hopefully all I got to do is put that in and we're good to go. Now, Murphy's Law, let's see how this works. Oh, you can do it, huh? I've got my tool. Okay. So, all that being said, I'm going to get down on my knees and pray and work at the same time. And it also it poured rain yesterday, too, on top of everything. So, me and you, Tyre. And I cut my finger, so now my finger hurts. That should go in there. And this.
Okay. Then. Whoop, we got air coming out. Woohoo! <laughs> right, but that's good news. It's good news. Because we haven't been able to get air, air to come out of that tire, no matter what we did. Not that one wants air coming out Over of their here. tire. Here goes up to it. Okay, that should be it. I was actually saying we have 80, 85, 9, 95 pounds in there. Okay, so we got 95 pounds. So I'm going to start to put a little air in it. Air is going in. And this is a Vi Air. It really does well with these tires. The smaller compressors, they overheat, they struggle trying to pump this much air pressure into a tire. So you actually get your reading when you release? Yeah, right there. Okay. Gotcha. Good. If I need to bleed air, I push this and okay. it bleeds air out. Gotcha. See? Gotcha. It'll bleed it in a hurry. Okay. So now. And this is how much air we put in our tires. Yes, now there's a whole. It will vary. vary. <laughs> Depends on your rig, your weight, how you like your RV to ride. It's 120 max pressure for these tires anyway. But you have to weigh your own rig. And then it's then like I said, it's it's if you go in the forums, it's all over the place how much people keep air in their tires. It's just after you get enough air in there to support your weight, then it's up to the ride. You will never outwear this tread. And on these tires, there's a DOT number. It'll say DOT and then there's four numbers, like 1819 or something like that. They're very hard. It could be on the inside. Yeah, they're, they're not easily they're not, easy but, to see. But they're we'll try on to put there, a picture up. But they're on there. And how you read them is the first two numbers are the week, the tire manufacturer, the last two numbers of the year. Now, if you have three digits at the bottom, I believe that means they were made in 2000 or before. But anything made in 2000 after, if it's like 1918, week 19, year 2018. And then, once again, there's a debate. Seven years, eight years, 10 years. It's, I think it's how well you maintain them, the UV, where you live, how much riding, what type of riding, but the big thing is that, you know, you keep keep them proper air pressure for your rig, and always check, make sure there's no cracks or something forming on them, but air pressure is the biggest thing, and, and, and weight distribution in your RV. Try to keep everything level, and that should hold your tires. I had a set of good gear RV G70s that lasted me almost 10 years. In fact, it's what we bought on the RV, added on there. And we just we took them off because I knew then nine years I wasn't gonna push push them any farther than that. The tread was still great. There's no cracks in the sidewalls, and uh, they were still looked pretty good. I mean you can take them someplace and have them tested, but after nine years I didn't want them anymore anymore anyway. So we bought another set of tires. The, RV, the Goodyear RV G70s are nice, but they're kind of they're pricey for me. They're over 900 a tire. So I wouldn't buy China tires, but there's tires in between, like Yokohama, Sumitomo, um, Goodrich, Cooper, um, just uh, the Falcon. Um, these are Sumitomo tires. So you can, you can look at a price range of tires at Michelin. Some of the uh, clubs that you can join will have a discount tire program through them, and you can check that out. 
but then you just have to weigh how much you want to spend for tires versus your comfort level. I mean, I don't want to get tires that are, that are dangerous. And to me, anything made in China tires is dangerous. But <laughs> that's just me. And I think a lot of people in the forums tend to agree. But if you get a good good tire, you want $3,000 for a set of six, you know, twenty seven to 3500 I mean, you can spend five, $6,000 for a set too. It's up to you and your comfort level and your pocketbook. Go ahead. The, the lady in pajamas rose her hand and, and, <laughs> and she's even got a cap on. We're here in Florida and the sun's out. It's freezing out here. <laughs> um, okay, so I have a question. Yeah. Isn't it true that they will date out before they wear out? Yes. And all my experience truck driving over the years, um, and I think most RVers, well, Class A motorhome, will agree that these will time out, date out before you will ever wear that this tread out that's in these tires. And it's usually seven years is what I think. Somewhere around that area, just general principle. Car tires, you buy them, they have a mileage on them. You're buying a 60,000 mile tire, 70 mile, 1,000 mile tire, you know, 80,000 mile tire. So you're getting tires with the mileage on them. These tires, truck tires, basically, you're not buying a mileage tire. It's going to have a date on it. You're really buying a tire that you want, that gives you the ride you want for the price that fits your pocketbook. That's pretty much what it comes down to. A lot of different tires. And if you go on the forum and ask about the best tire, well, you're going to get every brand made in America or, or Japan. Same as oil. Famous tire pressure, you know, there's lots of different, there's a whole range of people that have different experience with different products. So, there you go. So this is our tow vehicle. I just put new tires on it. These are Firestone. Destination, I think they're a 70,000 mile tire. I had Bridgestone Duelers on before, and I had an 80,000 mile tire on, and at 40,000 mile I had a slow leak. I get the Firestone because it's warrantied there, and they put it up on their lip to fix my leak, and they come over here and look at this. So I went over and looked, one of them was starting to peel, and the others were severely worn on the inside, which could have came from alignment, not having alignment properly possibly tire pressure but also when he was talking about giving me the uh, price adjustment for the for the warranty apparently if you pull your car behind an RV as a toad the warranty doesn't like that because I guess the toad goes like this a little bit or going down the road maybe it tends to wear the tires out but I've been keeping the right tire pressure and we have these monitors on them that go to our cab so we know how much air is in our tire and our toad while we're going down the road. So it wasn't a pressure issue, it could have been the toe issue, could have been a little bit of alignment issue. These tires handle the towing better than the others, at least that's what I was told. So this is what we went with. So when, even though you're keeping your proper air pressure and the tread looks good you need to kind of get underneath there and look and see what's going on especially around the edges and keep up with those alignments keep up with those alignments and what about rotating them same thing yeah yeah some tires call for rotation some don't some of them want you to rotate them front to back some of them do crisscross it's up just look at your car and see what it says and uh Take care of that, at least yearly, I would say. Okay, so the bottom line is um, you need to do what's right for your individual vehicle. Because I'm not a tire expert by any means. I'm just doing by what has been told me by the tire experts where I bought my tires. That this is what I should do. So that's what I plan on doing. But once again, Every vehicle's different, so you got to go 
your own vehicle, whatever your handbook says to do, and and let just take care. That way you'll be safe with your with your cars and your RV, motorhome. Nobody wants a blowout. So I guess I'll wrap this little tire thing up here now that we've finished this little adventure with the valve stem. So this is Gary. I got Sharon behind me working the camera. And this is Rough Road RV Life. It's Rough Road. We're here in sunny Florida. Getting ready to hit the road very shortly. And uh, we we'll hope to see you on the road. So take care, safe travels. We like looking at freedom. Bye. Here, epilogue. Well, that says 98.9. <laughs> so Gary walks back over here and I hear him say, oh great, it's leaking. It may have, have lost, what, five pounds, five, five or six oh, pounds? Oh, there it went. 104.4. Okay, we're good. <laughs> oh, my little do-it-yourselfer here. He Did is here stellar at everything he does. <laughs> Where is the, uh, <laughs> did you hear it? I heard it. That little skinny thing got stuck. <laughs> and he's already cut his finger today. Oh, he's just entertainment. Okay. So, <laughs> but I am going to put my pressure valve on and turn my, I'll turn on my monitor and make sure it's working. <laughs> Stay tuned for more adventures of off-road RV life. We have a million laughs a day. <laughs>